So let's begin. Uh, of course, Rotterdam. I want to start by the financial uh, details. Rotterdam is a major city in Netherlands, probably the second biggest uh, in terms of population, and it's the most important port of Europe the biggest one uh, so definitely it's a business city a trading city and it's a dense city really dense city so uh, your biggest problem would be finding a suitable accommodation here now I'm living in the Hatta building uh, that's on the campus and administered by the SSH student housing company in my opinion, this is the best option available for, especially for the first year international students who are probably uh, foreign to Netherlands, who don't know anything about here, like where to live, who don't have relatives here. Therefore, living on a campus is a very convenient way of uh, getting used to your university life and it's also very uh, helpful if you're a, a long sleeper like me because I like taking long sleeps waking up late in the morning uh, and sometimes I have to go to bed late uh, due to a uh, heavy workload that's in my opinion uh, therefore yeah it's very convenient location wise so it's not easy to get a place here because there's a lot of demand to rooms here in Hatta building but uh, if someone says that uh, the rooms are totally full like there's no space left in the Hatta building I still advise you to constantly regularly check the website of the SSH company uh, and it has two parts short term uh, accommodations and long term I think it's called reserved accommodations I'm not really sure but short term accommodations are for students and long term accommodations are for again anyone but the long term one has a one time registering fee of 12 and a half euros as far as I remember uh, so of course get yourself registered in the short term one and check the rooms available if you're if you're a full time student check it for full time if you're a uh, short term exchange student for example that will last for 6 months or one trimester then check for the short term student category so obviously the rents here in this building they're uh, kind of fair considering the location the demand and supply of course and uh, what is provided to you which are of course the furniture and uh, utility gas and elect uh, gas electricity and water so all, all utilities are included in the price uh, this building is 16 floors uh, ranging from minus 1 to 15 the top two floors are for reserved long-term accommodations uh, and the other 13 floors are for short-term first-year international students so this first year doesn't mean that it's first year of bachelor it can be first year of masters it can be first year of doctoral studies so it ranges uh, the rents now the rooms here in this building are usually uh, three unit, three three uh, person units. So you, you'll be sharing your unit with two other people. You'll be sharing the kitchen, the bathroom, and the toilet, and you'll have your own private room, of course. Uh, and currently in two thousand. 19 right now the monthly rental price of one such a room which is 17 meters square 
is uh, 538.65 euros again as far as i remember but they may they may get updated so check uh, upon the updates um, so if if you have uh, enough luck if you're lucky enough you might actually get a room that is the, uh, inside a two person unit so in that case there's one big room of 26 meters square and one small room smaller room of again 17 meters square but in these units you have your private kitchen inside your own room and you just share the bathroom and the toilet with one other roommate therefore the, this is i mean i think better one unless you want to live with more people more friends although you can't select or you can't see who they are uh every floor until the 13th floor of course and included has only one two person unit so you must be yeah lucky enough and you must regularly uh keep a track of which rooms are available or not but if, if you just wait a lot just to in expectations of you know uh finding an empty two person unit you might just as well lose all the rooms that are currently available so i wouldn't really advise you on doing that uh in the the price of the bigger room in two person unit is 629 around 629 euros and the other one is the the 17 meter square one is the same as the other rooms uh, so uh, the benefit of this building is again its convenient location in the minus one floor there are currently seven washing machines and five dryers uh these are operated by a different firm called cold bill you have to download an app and uh you have to top up your balance in the app and pay through that app and then you can use those machines then there's a again a, in the minus one floor study room or socializing room where there are two vending machines too and again in a, a minus one floor you have the bicycle sheds uh, I think they're sufficient uh, for everyone living here but there uh, in case they're not there are also bicycle sheds like open ones outside where you can park and lock your bikes just outside the entrance from the minus one floor and of course across the university campus uh, in the minus one floor and there's also a large uh, room consisting of garbage containers where you can dispose your garbages and also uh, dispose, for example, recycle, recycled, uh, recyclable garbages such as glass, cardboard, uh, and plastics, I guess. Uh, so, therefore, I really advise you to uh, reserve an accommodation from this building. It's really convenient. One problem is that uh, there is a silverfish plague in the building. So if you have a big problem against insects, you might want to come prepared. Uh, there are shops here. I'm going to talk about them later. You can buy from those shops or stores. You can buy, of course, the insecticides, pesticides against, especially against silverfish, which I think are pretty common here in the Netherlands. Um, they are harmless, but if you get disgusted, then it's a problem. Personally, me, I was living in a room in the 13th floor. I then switched 
after my first try like after six months I my contract started on first of September and then I wanted it was an if it was going to end on fourteenth of August twenty nineteen and start on first September twenty eighteen. But then yeah, I wanted to live in a more comfortable room and I saw that my current room was available free uh, in the SSH company website. Uh, so right now I'm in it. I'm in the bigger room of a two-person unit. So yes, yeah, so I'm I'm very lucky to have this room actually. Uh, I mean you can switch rooms for a cost of seventy-five euros. It's in your contract agreement with the SSH. But yeah, I mean, if you're fine with the room you have, it's not uh, really necessary to change your room to a more comfortable one or a bigger one or a two-person unit. But sometimes it might be the case that maybe you have a problem with your roommate or and you can demand that you change your room to any, like doesn't matter whether it's a two-person unit or three-person unit, that might be the case. Uh, so other than that, now coming to the financials, of course, it's, it's an expensive city. I, I'm going to return back to accommodations later. Uh, but yeah, because I just started with finances and just drifted away to accommodation. So I just want to get back on our main topic right now. Uh, this is an expensive city. Absolutely. And when you check online, Cost of living in Rotterdam for a student per month, or yeah, and or per year, but yeah, per month, many places say one thousand euros is a decent amount. I don't agree personally. I don't agree. This is, and this is a serious underestimation, definitely. Of course, it depends. Again, it's a cliche, but it depends upon your lifestyle and. If you're keeping uh, track of your costs every month, every day, like me, I do that, then uh, you might as well uh, vary your definition of this monthly cost according to what you intend on including in it. <sighs> For example, me, like I include the book costs and one-time unique costs too in my financial uh, plan monthly budget so if you if you have set up something different like you have a separate budget for the school uh, costs like the I mean stationary costs book costs and one-time unique costs then it's a different story but me I just include all of them inside my monthly budget uh, so 1000 euros uh, I said it's not it's not enough I don't think it's enough unless you're a real hardcore saver uh, I have a friend uh, studying in Eindhoven Technology University he's from India and he's a saver real hardcore saver and for him, 1,000 euros is like high, an high amount. So definitely in that case, like people from Asia, as far as I observe, are more inclined towards saving and spending less. But of course, this varies according to your, your character, your interests, your personality, your hobbies. Therefore, I can't say anything. I just advise you to come with a budget. Look, I'm I'm not saying expenditure. I'm saying budget of one thousand five hundred euros per month, just as a safety margin. I can say, because uh, if you don't spend the remaining amount of your monthly budget, then you'll just uh, use it next year. It will just stay in your bank account and you'll be able to use it next year. Or if your parents allow, then you can spend that money on 
anything you like purchasing some things purchasing gifts uh, for your loved ones and bring them back to them or uh, you know when you acquire a student visa and maybe and then you get a, a temporary residence permit you can travel visa free inside the EU so therefore you can just spend that money on traveling uh, with your friends that would be better and more fun <laughs> it definitely is dependent upon you so but I just really advise you to come prepared because if you uh, have if you have a low budget then it would be hard for it to increase it later but coming with a higher budget and spending less is a better and safer way because the remaining amount again will just stay in your bank account and let's say at the end of your education you still have some extra amount left you can just uh, withdraw it and take it back or transfer it back to your account in your home country you can do that definitely currently just to give an example I can say I'm in the middle like of an extreme saver and an extreme spender although there is no limit to extreme spending you can spend as much as you want but yeah I mean uh, I can say I'm in the middle of it my average monthly spending until now so I've been here since September so September October November December and January now we're in today is the 10th of February 2019 so let's say five months so my average expenditure in this five months is around 1300 euros with one of course inclusive of the unit costs such as book costs bicycle costs because I mean uh, you buy it once of course some people get their bikes stolen or are unhappy of their bikes they want to change it buy a better one then it's a different story but yeah so inclusive of these costs definitely I think this is a decent amount 1300 it's not too much but it's not too less that's what I believe uh, the average coming to now coming back to average uh, accommodation costs here so let's come back to the accommodation uh, topic now in my opinion as far as I observed it's between 550 and 600 euros 550 and 600 euros that's the average monthly rent of course some areas for example center central area and this area in which the university is located Kralink say zoom so in these areas they might be a bit higher in areas such as the south the north uh Princeton Dam that's again in like the north east I guess and in in the very western part she dam and in the very eastern part of course uh, the rents are cheaper but then the length uh, and the time of transportation from your house to the university campus will increase of course uh, for this you will have increased transportation costs unless you're using a bike but then you will come to the campus uh, sweaty and tired every day you won't really want to experience that onto that is usually very cold in Netherlands that's the culture because uh, Netherlands is really in the north if you take a look at the world map and it's a cold country usually uh, with a lot of precipitation rains and sometimes snow normally it should snow more but unfortunately this year because i like snow it's a bit less although i don't like it when it's too much cold so 
uh, and there might also be ice pro uh, like uh, icing problems uh, so be careful when you're walking or riding a bike although uh, I see that the snow uh, is being removed uh, to the side and there uh, there are some salt spilled on the ground so that snow can melt uh, that's a really good practice by the uh, government and local municipality if they are the ones doing it so I don't think you will have much problem but just saying in case you're planning on riding from a long distance to the university campus uh, you have to be careful uh, don't go too fast so coming back to accommodations again now on the campus there is a newer building that only contains studio rooms. That's called the Shure building. It's X I O R. For some people, the pronunciation may differ. I prefer to call it Shure. So, uh, in that building, again, I don't know how many rooms, but there are around probably 300, maybe, because in this building, it's uh, around 330, 340 rooms. So I think it's a bit uh, smaller the number of rooms in that building, but it's a newer one, it's studios, so definitely more luxurious compared to this one. Of course, the rents are also uh, higher. Therefore, uh, starting starting from 670 euros. In this academic year, the prices are subject to change between two and three percent, as far as I know, due to the amount of inflation that occurs in the Netherlands each year. Uh, then there is another building that is owned by the SSH company, and it's also very close to the campus, like five minutes by bike almost that amount and like 10 minutes by walking or 15 minutes by walking if you walk slow uh, it's called the international house and it's maybe six or seven floors and there's some three unit three three person units most of them are two person units uh, the prices of the international house are a bit cheaper compared to here. I, I'm not really sure what the exact prices are though, because I have no information right now. Um, so yeah, you might as well try that if you can't find any rooms here on in the sure building available. But this is the most important deal before coming to Netherlands, you should have your room reserved. You know, you should have a definite room accommodation or else it's gonna be very tough and very stressful for you. In that case, you have to come to Netherlands a bit early uh, just to find a suitable room. Uh, yeah, and by the way, I'm seeing room. Maybe that has attracted your attention. In some cultures, it's not really usual to rent rooms you usually rent uh, a flat maybe yeah to all together with some other friends some other students but in Netherlands that's the culture for those who are foreign to it like me because uh, I'm Turkish in Turkey yeah like room renting uh, is not practiced very much it's very, something very rare usually you rent a flat with three or four other uh, students or just roommates anyone who's looking for cheap rooms so here is a bit different uh, by the way I have to mention that in the short-term accommodation of the SSH you're given several furnishes such as a table study table a chair desk lamp bed the wardrobe, whiteboard, yeah, you can check it 
better in more detail online in the SSH company website and please do so other than that uh, there is the student hotel now I think that's for the very rich now the, the, I know the rooms there they seem more comfortable luxurious but you pay a really high amount for a very less amount of space and usually you have to share your kitchen for the of course uh, lower options like standard or standard plus for example for the lower options you have to share your kitchen with many other people many other that's a problem uh, I will advise uh, taking a room there but if you are someone who has a lot of money and who really wants to live in a comfortable area a comfortable a luxurious room then it's totally dependent upon you uh, rooms start from around 800 euros per month includes of the utilities a bit maybe higher than that that's the standard room and I think the most expensive one is a bit over thousand euros per month that's like the uh, I don't know sweet like with suit with a double size king size bed or queen size bed whatever it is so I don't really advise you to uh, rent from the student hotel unless again your budget is really high but or else I can guarantee you that the beds are really comfortable uh, I think you get a TV in the room that's a plus you, of course you have your own uh, bathroom and shower uh, in your room so and they're also very nice looking uh, like it looks brand new luxurious um, only the kitchen for the lower options such as standard standard plus for example they are uh, separate and you may have to share them with many other people in a big kitchen room in more in the more expensive options of course you have your own kitchen too so the choice is totally yours and you also get a regular cleaning I don't know whether it's per week or per month but that's a great plus of course because here you have to do your own cleaning that might be a bit problem so I think this was it from the accommodation part unless I remember something new so yes let's come to the shopping uh, now thinking back of my own grocery shopping per week I, I do shopping per week uh, my weekly grocery shopping costs between 60 and 70 euros yes uh, as far as I remember that's the average uh, cost of my weekly grocery shopping uh, now the most well-known supermarket chain here is the Albertine and it has a lot of stores uh, there are two that are close to the university campus for example one is in Aldedike that's like 2.8 kilometers it's a big uh, branch it's a big store and in the second uh, floor there is a store called Hema and in Hema you can buy uh, products for or housing or for furnitures uh, for furnishing so like duets cushion uh, kitchen wear so Hema is uh, located there and behind that there's also 
uh, fitness saloon or so I think it's called basic fit I'm not sure uh, so there's another Albert Heinz store that is located in the Lustov passage in the Lustov Strat so it's like Lustov Street so uh, by the way uh, Dutch is very very close to English and if you want to learn Dutch I think it will be very easy compared to learning other languages for an English uh, speaker therefore I mean even without learning Dutch you won't experience any problems living here in the Netherlands because everyone almost everyone can speak a good level of English and you won't have any problems with that in banks in supermarkets or in shops or in government offices therefore Netherlands is really a good choice in terms of ease of everyday lives everyday living uh, there won't be any communication problems now uh, another chain of super oh yeah we were talking about the other albertine and list of passage so in list of passage there are several uh shops one is albertine it's a smaller one compared to the one in aldodyk next to that there is a very cheap supermarket called aldi you can definitely do your grocery shopping from there and its quality is also decent uh I really like the white cheese from Aldi, so I always go to Aldi for that white cheese. But yeah, Al Albertine offers better quality and more variety, and known brands, of course, like international brands, global brands. But yeah, if if you want to have a reduced uh, grocery expenditure, then Aldi is a great option in a list of passage there is a shop named Kreuzbad where you can buy uh, things like shampoo beet products insecticides some medicine so it's that kind of shop and then there's another shop called Vibra or Vibra I don't know how you pronounce it and I really don't know what they sell, but maybe some stuff such as uh, accessories or souvenirs. Then there's an ecological shop that sells biological products, natural products. And then there's a baker shop, I guess. And there's also a hairdresser for females. And also in the list of passage, there's another Hema again. And right across the street, there's a shop called Blocker. And from there, you can buy many stuff, again, regarding household, like kitchenware, cleaning stuff, you know, mops, for example, or hangers that you can stick on walls for hanging your towels, as an example. Uh, so I really like that shop, too. Other than that... For example, uh, there are a lot of Turks and Moroccans here in Netherlands as ethnic minorities. Uh, therefore, there are many Moroccan and Turkish supermarkets. Uh, there is one Turkish supermarket that's in Fritz Reisland, again, nearly three kilometers away from the campus. For Muslim students, you can buy halal meat from there. And for Turkish incoming Turkish students, you can access uh, a wide variety and range of Turkish products from there. Because I know if you're coming from a country to a different country, you'll probably miss those products from your own country that you were used to consuming. So. Uh, I definitely get that feeling. I can emphasize with that. And uh, for Turkish people, this is a great blessing. But the closest supermarket to the university campus is actually 
Spar University. And that's right inside the campus. Although it is a very, very expensive supermarket, other than some some items such as its own branded uh, water, its own branded uh, Coke or Sprite, you know, such things. It's, it's, everything is at least one and a half times the price of Albert Heijn, and Albert Heijn is the most expensive supermarket uh, chain in the Netherlands. So, Therefore, I really don't advise you to go to Star Spar unless uh, you're really tired, you don't want to go anywhere, or other supermarkets are already closed, or you just don't have time to, to go there. You know, uh, of course, it's the only supermarket you can probably access between the uh, beginning and end, and then beginning of your lectures or between the break times, because you usually have a break of fifteen minutes in each lecture and fifteen minutes between lectures. That's for IBA. I don't know for other uh, programs or degrees. Therefore, you would probably quickly want to. Get your snack or fizzy drink or juice or whatever, bake, bake good from SPAR and return back to your class immediately. So SPAR is very convenient in that manner. Uh, the variety of products offered there is not much, but it's still a decent amount. Uh, you can get everything you need but of course the uh, brands are not as much as you get that in Albert Heijn. The, the closest supermarket to the campus other than Spar University is called Plus. I actually never went there so I don't know what the prices are like and the product ranges are like. But I only know that is half a kilometer away from here. One day I hope to try that. And you can also try that. And if that's good, keep on going that. Or else just try the other supermarkets. I advise. The most... Um, the high, high, highest... Growing supermarket chain currently is Jumbo, and right now it's the most demanded, I guess, uh, as it it is considered to have the best price quality ratio. So you you can definitely trust Jumbo and do your grocery shopping from there, but it's not very close to the university campus i guess compared to the ones that i told or else i would have gone there myself and another supermarket chain that's again around three kilometers is little it's it's again another very cheap option uh but from my friends i have heard that the quality it's not that good, although the prices are also low. Uh, I can't remember anything else, and I don't know what else to say regarding supermarket shopping, grocery shopping, and there are some, there are not many, but there are some uh, butcheries. So, for in some countries, there is the culture of having buying your meat from a butchery. Uh, here, uh, that's not really existent. Uh, there are not many butcheries, but yeah, if you're a person who only trusts the quality of meats that are sold in butcheries, then you might have a bit of a problem 
because they're not widely available, but you'll definitely find uh, several within maybe a five kilometer range. That's what I can say. Now I want to pass on to the topic of banking. So the top three, as we could call them, the top three most famous banks here in Netherlands is one ING, two ABN Amro, and three Rabobank. And of course there are m many others that are big in terms of size, but these are the top three. Uh, the university has an arrangement with Rabobank. I don't know if it will change in the next academic year or the years after that, but in the one-stop shops, Rabobank comes uh, to the campus and when you also bring your documents that are necessary to get the student package and, and a Rubble World Pass, that is the debit card given to the students or anyone, but yeah, I mean, for students, you get a Rubble World Pass. Uh, and if you also bring your documents that are required, then you can finish your uh, paperwork in, on the campus, that's very convenient. And just wait until your bank card is sent to your address. Uh, currently, I use Robobank, and it's I think it's a decent bank. It's a good one. Uh, the anyways, the only thing I do is just pay with my bank card. I really am not interested in other services of the bank. When you deposit money to your bank account in Rabobank, you're charged a fee of one and a half euros. Currently, uh, that's per transaction. And I don't know the exact amount that is charged to you when you withdraw money, because I have never done so. But you can search it online. Uh, in the Robobank website. I think similar rates are there for ABN Amro and ING, but I don't know. But these are three banks that are most commonly uh, used by students, especially uh, for international students, it's either ING or Robobank, but yeah, ABN Amro is also very popular. Plus, their uh, offices are also closed ING is very close to Albertine Autodike, so that's like 2.8 uh, or 2.7 kilometers. Same goes with ABN Amro, same distance. Uh, and Robobank is a bit uh, far compared to these. Uh, it's the closest one is located in Burrs, as far as I know. So. For that, you'll probably have to cycle or take the tram. But yeah, it's not very far, maybe five kilometers. Uh, and I don't know what else I can say regarding banking. You can download the app and conveniently pay, uh, make transfer payments through the app. You know, between students, we, we can transfer money to each other's accounts conveniently through online app uh, and for Robobank we have this item called Robobank scanner that makes transactions more secure uh, but so in order to make transactions you have to insert your card into it when using online uh, transfer services, uh, excluding the mobile app, of course. So with that, you can uh, securely make your payments. I don't know if the other banks have 
something similar. Yeah, and this is from backing. Uh, I don't know what else to say. You can choose your own bank, of course, but if you're registered for the one stop shop, so, so there are multiple one stop shops held by the university that take place on the campus where uh, several employees of the Rabobank come, several employees of uh, the Rotterdam municipality come. That's for your getting your burger service number. So burger service number, I don't think I'm pronouncing it correctly, but that's how it's written, is literally your uh, citizen service number. So it's like social security number, something like that. Uh, you need it to live here, of course. And to get that, you need to bring some documents. Uh, just check it from the university's websites. One-stop shops are very useful and very convenient. So when you first come to Netherlands, you don't know of any places, any locations. You're a bit lost, maybe excited and worried. Uh, therefore, you would want to just get things done, get the important things done within you know one time, one go with a one go, and in the same place. So definitely, one-stop shop uh, is the best place to do that. And with the with the uh, Rotterdam municipality. You can just arrange your documents, give it to them, provide some more details that they're asking. And after the interview is done, uh, you expect your uh, details, including your service social security number, to come maybe in two weeks, sometimes in a week. Uh, other than that, you have uh, the, an employee from Lebara, that's the phone operator. Currently, I use Lebara. Uh, it's decent, and its rates are also uh, economic, but I don't think it's the best in terms of uh, call quality or the signal uh, signal strength because when I go indoors many times uh, I got my signal cut so you might try Vodafone or you might try T-Mobile they have a bit higher rates or at least I can say that for T-Mobile because I, I have checked it with a website but you can check it for yourself and see which one is more suitable for you and pick the one you desire. Um, but Lebara is there in a one-stop shop. You, you receive a free SIM card, uh, which you can top it up immediately. So yeah, uh, that's a good option too. There's also one called Uphone that is advertised as being very cheap, but I'm not really sure. So you have to check it. Other than that, in the one-stop shop, uh, there is an insurance firm called Aon. And with Aon, I think you can get your health insurance for 30 euros per month. I'm not really sure because uh, I had this thought in mind that and this was told to me by the university in a message that the government of Netherlands wanted like that. You have to have your health uh, insurance made before coming to Netherlands. So I got my health insurance in Turkey from an uh, insurance company called Mopfrey. Initially, I thought maybe... This could be more expensive, but 
the prices were eventually nearly the same. And Mafra is an international insurance company that is based in Spain. That's what I know. Uh, so you can just complete your insurance thing in your own country without having to worry about getting yourself insured here. So that would be more convenient. Although you have to bring a copy, hard copy of your insurance documents that I highly advise you to do so. Here, oh man, the, the health system is a bit, in my opinion, problem. Okay, people are not uh, unhealthy people get sick maybe less often, but health system is a bit problem. That's my opinion. Because uh, you can't directly go to hospital for like regular, I don't know, control or checkup kind of thing. I I'm not really sure, but yeah, you can't like go and saying, oh, doctor, like I have this sickness. Can I take a look at it, please? You know, let me take a line number. No, I don't think it works like that. You first have to go get yourself uh, checked by uh, an Heisen Arts. That's what it's called. It's like practitioner, general practitioner. And the closest one to our campus is called uh, Rosenberg. Heisenart Centrum, so it is close, not far, two, between two and two and a half kilometers from here. Uh, there are six general practitioners there, and they have their assistants, secretaries. So I just went and asked that I wanted to get myself checked, you know, with the doctor. I had to ask him some things because I wanted a prescription for medicine that was only sold with a prescription and uh, each of the uh, secretaries they told me that the doctor is full for that day and I asked him I asked them okay then when are they available is it a week after is it a month after I mean when and then they said, are you a patient of the doctor? I said, no, but okay, then let me become a patient of the doctor. And they said, all of them said, no, unfortunately, the doctor uh, is full of patients. So what the hell? Should I die? That, that That's a big dilemma, a big problem. Maybe I'm uh, ill-informed about system over here but uh, I don't think there's a detailed uh, information given by the university regarding the health system so I think that's really lacking because I checked the website of the university regarding this really uh, poor information so you have to be aware of uh, this problem and you can go to hospital of course in case of emergency and the most well-known one is the Erasmus Medical Center uh, that's not so close by but yeah you still you can go there like maybe in 20 minutes so, uh, but I mean the health system is flawed in my opinion because what do we do as international students maybe the local ones they know uh, how to deal with it. Uh, they have maybe their own doctors assigned, own practitioners assigned. Yes, but we, that's a question mark. Uh, but there are also a lot of pharmacies available. I can tell you that. But again, many uh, medicines are sold with prescription. My advice, if you have a special illness that you know, or illness that might be triggered uh, seasonally, just bring the necessary, the relevant uh, 
medicines with you when coming here and you know consume them when you require so and when they're finished then you can go back to your country in the for example christmas break after the at the end of the first trimester and again get uh, the required amount and again bring back when you're coming back or if you have brought <laughs> enough amount of medicines for a whole year then you can do that in your summer break uh, other than that one of my friends told me that there's a place called Levinas again that's like a practitioner centrum uh, that's a private one but in the case of a private one, I don't know what will happen with the payments. How will you pay? Uh, how does the insurance thing work? You really have to dig deep into the information regarding the health system here. That's uh, one of the most important advices I can give to you. So this was more or less uh, anything and everything about the health system. I, nothing else comes to my mind at the moment. And also this is it for our first video regarding some wide variety of tips in life here in Rotterdam, in Erasmus University Rotterdam as an international student. See you in the second video which will again be in the same team and cover several topics uh, giving information on living in Rotterdam as an international student.